Hello everyone, and welcome back to the Fluctus Channel. Ship operators worldwide spend enormous amounts of resources to ensure their seagoing vessels are not only safe to operate, but also efficient. The propeller that moves the ship is regularly maintained as it affects the ship's performance, and this can be costly, especially if it needs to go through the dry docking process. During dry docking, a ship is completely removed from the water. This enables work to be carried out on the exterior of the ship that is below the waterline. To get a ship into a dry dock, a large receptacle is flooded with water up to the adjacent sea level. This allows the ship to be easily maneuvered by tugboats to enter through a lock or gate called a caisson. Once in place, the water is pumped out, allowing the ship to settle on prearranged blocks on the floor of the dock, entirely out of water. One of the most important and the most difficult parts of the evolution is the actual transit into the dock because everything happens very quickly, there's very little room for air, and there are many moving parts. Once the ship is properly in place, a thorough inspection of the entire propulsion system is necessary before workers begin the elaborate process of manually removing nuts and bolts to decouple the propeller from the intermediate and the massive tail shaft. Despite the need for regular maintenance, the strength and resilience of a ship's propeller are assured from the manufacturing line. Modern propeller manufacturing applies a combination of both robotics and sand casting methods. The mold cavity is preformed to the specific size of the propeller to be produced. A hot mixture of aluminum alloy and steel is poured into the mold and allowed to cool. After cooling, the cast is broken to reveal the new propeller. The sand and cast structure are usually recovered and preserved for further use. Final surface adjustments are made with manual grinding and polishing methods. A blue fit test is done to check for an accurate fit between the propeller and the shaft cone, after which the product can be transferred to the assembly line. Apart from maritime vessels, aircraft propulsion systems also require regular maintenance. This ensures that the giants of the skies fly without incident. After the initial inspection, a jet engine's maintenance is done on a moving assembly line, known as the pulse line. The engine components are dismantled in the module disassembly chamber before the parts are checked and repaired. The repaired components are then reassembled and the engine is ready for another round of inspection and final testing. One of the most important components of a jet engine is the blades. These are manufactured through advanced 3D printing technologies which have revolutionized the manufacturing industry. It applies the resin transfer molding technology or RTM in producing 3D woven composites for aircraft engine parts. Since the jet engine blade must meet specific requirements in terms of shape, dimensions, weight, stability, and temperature resistance, the RTM technology is preferred for its manufacturing because of its fiber-reinforced composite end products. This process can also be automated to ensure large-scale production of complex 3D and continuous jet engine blades. This automated manufacturing process has actually gone a long way in simplifying the production of large-scale complex jet engines and engine blades. This is in stark contrast to what was achievable just four or five decades ago. In those days, the jet engine manufacturing process was much more involved and complicated.
It could take as many as two years to produce a single jet engine. Preliminary studies were carried out by visual inspection and intuition, assisted by computers and some magnetic memory systems to determine the correct parameters and state of the components like velocities and vibrations. The entire manufacturing process involved detailed and complex steps to ensure that parts conform to specifications. But the rapid evolution of manufacturing techniques since the turn of the century has not only simplified these steps, but enabled greater capabilities. Just like jet engine and ship propeller maintenance, train wheel inspection and maintenance is also a very crucial process when it comes to the rail transport industry. Though these solid axles are built to last about 12 years, they are inspected for corrosion and cracks at intervals of about 12 months, depending on their frequency of use. To prevent crack development, coating technologies are widely used in the railway industry. The paints used generally have high corrosion and abrasion resistance, as well as high durability, which is their resistance to weather conditions. To ensure their durability, train wheels and axles are manufactured from scrap steels, known as billets, using forging or casting techniques. The scrap materials are heated in a rotary furnace before being cast in graphite molds. The molten material is rapidly cooled by dousing them in water. This develops its high hardness. This is enhanced with the help of forging and hammering to give them their required shapes and sizes. Finally, all wheels and axles are tested using ultrasonic and magnetic testing procedures to ensure that they are of the quality required for the maximum safety and comfort of the users. Though the propulsion systems of ships, airplanes, and trains will ultimately break down at some point, their longevity is always assured directly from the assembly line. Their lives are prolonged by the advancing maintenance technologies that keep them operational even after decades of service. That's the end of this video. I hope you enjoyed it. Make sure to subscribe to this channel so you don't miss any of our new content. See you next time.